I want to uh, just walk you through um, a process that we use in woodworking called draw boring. And this is where we use a dowel that we cut to pass through the mortise hole, through the tenon, and uh, we offset the hole on the tenon to the mortise hole hole to draw the pin that we make. This will be typical. Here's a, a dowel um, that we would cut to pass through here, pass through a tenon like this one here, so it go through the two together. But we don't just drill a hole through both pieces, we offset the hole slightly. And I want to show you that process. So I've already drilled these two. This is actually a table that I'm working on, but it could be just about anything that needs a mortise and tenon joint. So I've laid out the position for the hole on this one. So I'm going to bore through using a brace and bit. So I'm doing a 3 8 hole in this case. So that's on my center line. I go through and I don't want to take off the wall on the inside so my bit's good and sharp. When I can feel the pressure lessening, I go lightly. So it's gone through that wall now. I go through to the other side. This gives me perfect alignment from one side to the other doesn't matter whether it's dead square or not. I'm feeling for this little snail of the bit here until I can feel it protruding through. Turn it around and bore from the other side. So I get a clean rim to the hole on both sides, just like that, no tear out. There we go. Then you clean out the mortise hole, make sure you don't have any fibers left inside. Now in this case, I've numbered these mortises because each mortise is dedicated. So I've got C going to C. So this goes here. It's a good snug fit. And I get this seated as much as I can tight to make sure there is no gap right in here. That's as close as I've got on both sides. I've got that just fine. And then watch what happens here. Let me show you. What we do is we take the point of the bit here and we place it on here. Now on big mortises you can just measure you can use square lines and so on. So I drop this inside the hole, just pop it like that, and that's given me the center, the very center of the hole. And then we take them apart. A lot of people think that you simply bore through the whole thing. That's not the case at all. So can you see that little dot there? That was the point of the bit. Now I'm going to move this 1 16th nearer to the shoulder. So I'm actually going to bore it on that center line, but 1 16th nearer to the shoulder. And instead of just gambling on this and hoping I get the snail in that spot, I'm going to take a, an awl and make a start hole just to get the exact point that I want at that 1 16th into the shoulder line and then I bore from one side just until the snail comes through again. So this offsets the hole slightly. On bigger mortises if you were doing a timber frame building you could be offsetting that hole by quarter of an inch because your pegs, your trunnels might be one and a quarter or one inch, whatever, so they're bigger. You have more flex in the wood, but the principle's the same. So there we have the offset hole. And in this case, I'm going to glue my tenon because this is a furniture piece. So this goes in here. I know that I've got the right um, sized hole. I know I've got the, the right um, 
step inside. So all I need now is the glue. One of the things is, just very quickly, I'll show you how I arrived at my dowel here. This is the dowel piece. This fits the, the exact size of the hole. Here I've got a piece of 3 8 by 3 8 material. It's just slightly over 3 8 And what I do to start this uh, dowel piece, I take off the corners like this. Just to get a start. Like that. I work down it. I already read the grain here, so I've got some idea of the direction of the grain. I'm just taking off the corners. This will just ease the passage because what I've done is I drilled a piece, a hole through a piece of steel, just mild steel works, a hinge or just about any piece of steel will work for this. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a start here just to ease it into the hole. So here's where I, I drilled the hole in a piece of steel. This is an old hacking knife. Start this this way. And that's my dowel, very simple, nothing special, no special tapers, this is just a, a 3 8 diameter hole and that gives me the start that I needed for this. On the beginning of my peg I'm going to make a start here so that as it goes into the offset hole I've staggered this point so it doesn't break the tenon inside so I'm basically sharpening this just like a pencil. That offsets it slightly so when it goes into the, uh, the inside of the, um, the tenon, this is slightly off so it's got a little stagger inside that will help it to locate. So I'm going to glue. Red. I don't need a lot of glue peg really will hold it. If you didn't want to use glue that's fine, there's no, it's not really essential. I like the glue as well. So this goes in here. And get it as square as you can so the shoulder line is lined up. So you're not relying just on the draw bore pin. I don't know if you can see inside this hole. Right in here, probably not, but I can see that the hole is nicely offset exactly where I would want it to be. And then I'm not going to glue this, there's no need to, so I drive this pin in here now. Now you could do the whole frame and you could clamp it as well if you wanted to, but this will be sufficient. So now I'm going to drive this. Now that's just about hit the bench here, so I'm going to go in the vise on the top of the vise just to make an extra little bit of a drive here. So I've got that taper on the hole is now out. This is rock solid. There is no way this would ever come apart. So I can trim this off with a saw. Just a tenon saw will probably work. Leave your saw away from the face of the wood or use a flush cut saw if you want to. Um, I just use a regular saw. It works just fine. And then you can pare down the face of your wood with a sharp chisel. Like this. Just use the corner of your chisel, work the face like this. 
And that's really basically how we use a draw bore to pull the joints together. It's a perfect uh, joint with that and that keeps it there pretty much forever. Take out the... Well, that's it. That's basically it. Let the glue dry, cut it out when it's dry and you're done and dusted with it. <laughs>